This week's word of the week is going to be submerged arc welding. Uh, it's commonly broke down into SAW for an acronym. Uh, if you're talking about the AWS, they always say SAW. They're talking about submerged arc welding. The reason I chose submerged arc welding is because I had somebody the other day come up to me and they said, submerged arc welding is underwater welding, right? I got that written over here, right? It commonly gets confused with underwater welding, I think just because of the word submerged. Some people think you're submerged in something. Uh, it's actually the... Uh, the welding and the arc are submerged under a flux. That's why it's called uh, submerged arc welding. It has nothing to do with underwater welding, zero. So on a scale of one to 10, one being uh, not that big of a deal, 10 being a huge deal, if you don't know what the sub arc is and you're in the welding world, it's probably about a three. Uh, it's not real important, but it's one of those things that you're either gonna do all the time or you probably won't do it at all. So it's not a huge deal if you don't know what it is. It's kind of a bigger deal if you think it's underwater welding. Like you tell somebody that submerged arc welding is underwater welding, that's a bigger deal, I think. Um, what we're gonna do today is go over some advantages and disadvantages of this. Then I'm gonna show you some pictures of some sub arc setups. So we'll do first like a cartoon or an illustration, if you will, of uh, the process. And then I'll show you some real setups so you can kind of understand it. And what sub arc does is it usually runs along a line. So it's usually a long straight line joint. And then a wire comes down, a solid wire, so it's not flux cord, and it strikes the arc. But before it strikes the arc, this uh, hopper will drop flux down in front of it. And, and it's like in a granule uh, form. So the, the granule formed flux goes around the weld as the weld's happening, and you don't see it. It's submerged under that flux. The, the slag is usually really thick and uh, uh, the flux is then, the flux is not used, it's then usually vacuumed up and reused. And some of them have vacuums right on the back of them, so this all happens at once. Some of them have more than one wire that goes in. If you're filling a huge um, uh, joint, they'll have two, three wires going into it, so it fills it faster. And I'm not talking like 16th of an inch, some of them are big, like 5 30 second diameter wires. So it's a really useful process if you're filling straight line big joints. Uh, some, there's some uh, round applications. If you're doing pipes that have a really uh, wide joint, uh, they can spin the pipe as you're doing it and it stays on the top. Uh, if you get on the internet, you can see all kinds of applications for this. But let's go over some advantages and disadvantages real quick. First, let's go over advantages. High deposition rates. So like I was saying, they're, they're big diameter wires and you can have two, three of them going into the joint at once. So that's gonna produce a high deposition rate. Deep penetration, so they're going to put some big amperages down here to get good deep penetration. High speed welding is more for the thinner materials, and uh, you can't get real thin with this, but for the thinner um, applications, you can do real high speed welding, minimal fumes and light, so you're not, you don't need a helmet, you don't even see it. The fumes and the light are all contained within the flux. Here we here, no edge prep. Uh, you don't have to do edge preps, you just do a really wide. Um, uh, root opening and then it fills it in because it's putting tons of material down there so you don't have to do like you know bead grooves and all that stuff. Uh, indoor outdoor, you can do it indoors, you can do it outdoors. Wind is not a factor, right? Because that the weld is underneath that flux. Um, single pass on uh, thick plates, so you can do uh, you know a half inch plate, you can do one pass on it, you just slow it down, let that pile into the into the weld. No spatter, the spatter is all contained because it's all covered up. And then 50 to 90% flux recovered. So the flux you don't use, like, like I said, either vacuum it up or uh, they have vacuum attached right to the uh, actual machine. Usually this is automated. Uh, there are handheld ones, but the automated ones, some of them actually have a vacuum that trails it and sucks this back up and goes back up in the hopper. Maybe it gets filtered to make sure uh, none of the uh, slag got put into it because that won't go through the hopper if it's, if it's big. It's got to be small grains. So then we're going to go over here to disadvantages. There's a lot of advantages, right? So this is the weld, welding process for everything, right? Well, there's some major limitations to this, too. Uh, limited to ferrous, so that's a big limitation. Uh, but this is the biggest one right here, flat. You can only do flat surfaces, uh, 1F, uh, 1G, or 2F. You can do horizontal fills in some applications. But it's got to be flat, otherwise the flux is just going to fall off, right? So that's your main limitation, which is huge, right? You can't do it upside down, the flux is, is just going to fall. Uh, what else we got? Long straight joints, it's limited to long straight joints. Like I said, there's certain pipe ones that they spin the pipe, and then 
it just stays on the top. But for the most part, it's usually long, straight joints. Um, flux handling systems are kind of complex, but the, the vacuum system that I'm talking about, or there's other ones that you, you vacuum up and you got to sift it, so that's kind of a pain. Uh, safety with the flux, because the flux kind of gets all over the flux dust, so there's some safety concerns there. Uh, inner pass and post weld slag removal, you got to get rid of the slag. It's just like stick welding or flux core, you got to chip the slag and it's done. Uh, backing strips, you got to have a backing strip. If you have a square joint and a uh, square butt joint and it's really wide, it's just going to fall through if there's no backing strip. So you got to have some type of backing strip. And uh, you have to have heavy thicknesses. You're not welding 16th of an inch steel with this. So uh, those are the uh, advantages and disadvantages. Hopefully that gives you a starting point here for what sub arc is. Uh, you're better off looking on YouTube for a video of somebody doing it if you really want to see you know, how it works if you're not quite understanding this. But like I said, we're going to show you some pictures of an illustration, which is just basically a schematic of how the system is working. Uh, real simple, and then we'll show some uh, pictures of um, some actual sub arc welds and a sub arc welding system. So this is as simple of a schematic as it gets, right? So you have a DC power source right here, and it works just like a, a regular welder here. You got a negative and a positive, shorts out, and you can see it's got drive rolls that feed the wire down into the puddle. Uh, there's your work, and then up here's your, your flux, and the flux is rolling down in front of it to submerge the actual arc. So it's a pretty simple system. So what we'll do is we'll uh, look at some other photos here and move on. So this is our first photograph here, and you can see this is the uh, flux right here. The wire is coming right down through here, and the weld is happening right in here. And you can see the, the groove right here that it's filling in. Pretty simple system, right? Great for filling big sections, thick sections. So let's take a look at another picture here. This is the last picture we're going to look at, and you can see right up here is where the wire's coming down through, the welds in here, it's submerged under this flux. And this is what I was talking about earlier. There's a vacuum system on the back sucking the excess flux up. And you can see right here, this is what the slag looks like, and it's real thick, heavy slag. So hopefully that gives you a good uh, idea of what submerged arc uh, welding is. I think the main thing is don't confuse it with underwater welding. It has nothing to do with underwater welding. That's what's kind of a big deal. If you say sub arc, you think it's underwater welding, uh, it's not going to look good on your part. So that's all we got for this week. Hopefully you know what sub arc is. Thanks for watching. I'm subscribing to TV Weld, and we're out.